Hello, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning to you. Good morning to you, my friends and my family members all over the world. Good morning to all you members of the Love family. I appreciate your unflinching support given to me even since the inception of this program. Since we started, you have been consistent in supporting me and jeering me on. I, I really bless God for your life. I thank God for your consistency. I thank God for uh, everything that he has used to, used to you to accomplish on this program. Thank you for all your contributions. Good morning to you, Osa Emanuels. It's a delight having you in the house this morning. And as we await our other participants, I want us to start sharing the program immediately and then notifying our friends and family that the studio is open. Good morning to you and do uh, begin to enjoy this program. Let me play this to you, I mean for you, just to say good morning. When I wake up in the morning, I'll bow my head and tell God. From the evil of the night you save me, you guide and you protect me. I just want to tell you thank you, Lord. You got me singing. Okay. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. I think that should be the song on everybody's uh, tongue this morning. Thanking God for all he has done on this second, second Saturday in the month of March, year 2022. To God alone be all the glory and praise, and I want to thank him for preserving our lives. Our hearts go out to those uh, brethren in Ukraine, in Russia, and all in the neighboring countries where there is trouble. We are praying that the peace of God will reign there. We are praying that God will intervene. We are praying that the oppressions will stop. We are praying that this untold hardship that is being forced especially on men and women you know we stop in the name of jesus we we celebrate all those countries who are accommodating refugees from ukraine and uh, who have been a blessing to them we pray that the lord will enlarge you we pray that the lord will bless you we pray that the lord will replenish your stock in the name of jesus and for everyone who is supporting these refugees privately or corporately, we pray that the abundance of God be released upon your life in Jesus' name. But above all, we pray that the peace of God will reign. And this, this you know, uh, uncalled for war will stop henceforth in Jesus' name. God bless you. Let's all continue to pray for God to intervene, minister to all the leaders, so that there can be peace in the land. Amen and amen. Good morning to you, Ada M. Wereji. Good to have you in the house. I'm excited that you are all showing up already. I want us to please go on and start sharing the program to our various platforms. Let's start sharing. Without delay, we are going to go uh, into our discussion as soon as possible. But please, let's start by sharing to as many people as possible. Good morning to you, Sister Rose Jamfi. Good to have you in the house. To all of you who have been supporting me, I pray that heaven will continue to support you in Jesus' name. Okay, while you are sharing, let me give uh, 21 shares. <laughs> Is 21 okay for the women? 21 shares to all the women in the house on the occasion of the International Women's Day. That is usually March 8th of every year. So March 8th is the International Women's Day. I want to say con congratulations to all the women. I want you to know that God does not make mistakes. So if he has created you a woman, it's because he knows you are best created as a woman. So you are a blessing and don't ever forget that God created the man first, but the man was not complete until the woman came into the scene. In fact, the man had a problem of chronic loneliness, and so God brought the woman. So women always know that you are a solution 
God created you as a solution. God created you as a blessing. God created you as a solution and as a blessing. Don't ever allow anyone to turn you into a problem, to give you a name that God has not given you. You are a blessing to creation. You are a blessing to God and you are a blessing to man. And I pray that your children will rise up to celebrate you in the name of Jesus. I also pray for every woman in the house, those who are not married within the next one year, may God bring your way your rightful spouse in the name of Jesus. Those who are praying for the fruits of the womb, womb may the Lord surprise you this year <clears throat> in the name of Jesus. Happy Women's Day. In fact, you know, at a point, I was just, I, when, the, when it, was, it was almost the Women's Day, I was, I was just meditating on this issue of celebrating Women's Day, uh, Mother's Day, Women's Day, uh, UK, Mother's Day, Fr uh, France, Mother's Day, uh, Belgium, we have another day for Mother's Day, we have International Mother's Day, we have this Mother's Day, that's Mother's Day. So I was going to start, you know, making moves to, to, to sensitize the world that we should just have one Mother's Day, you know, just one Mother's Day, just as we have one Father's Day, and that should be enough, and everybody will not be confused again. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that, indeed, every day should be Women's Day. Every day should be Women's Day. Sincerely speaking, you know, whenever I, I just think, when I think about this nine months of pregnancy, that alone, that alone, that alone. You know, I'm not a woman. I could just, I could only imagine what goes on in the body of a woman when she's carrying another human being in her body, nurturing that human being, supporting that human being, feeding that human, human being, and, you know, protecting that human being in her body for nine months. What goes on is better imagined. I cannot, I cannot comprehend it because it will take a woman to understand how it feels. But I, as a man, when I think about that and all that women have to go through in life, you know, I, I conclude or I have concluded that every day should be Women's Day. Every day should be Women's Day. So it's not only March 8th that is Women's Day, even today is Women's Day. So I celebrate you and I will always celebrate you. Also, let me also say uh, this, you know, women have been, you know, under more oppression, more suppression, more abuse all over the world, even than the men. And when I talk about women, I'm even talking about the, I'm talking about the female gender generally. Even children, female children, you know, they are more abused than their male counterparts. Women are more abused than their male counterparts. Look at the war that is going on in Ukraine. You know, the men are staying back to fight. God bless the men. But the men have been thrown, you know, to the wolves and, you know, they have been released to the, to the wilderness. Thank God for those who are accepting them and, and helping them. But even during times of war, there are people who take advantage of women. You know, it happened in some regions where there were war. I, I saw a, a video uh, recently of what happened. I think is in, is in Aleppo or something. Women, they were raised. I mean, they were raped, you know, by terrorists, raped and abused. And they have gone into hiding. You know, they cannot meet their families again. Some of them, their husbands rejected them because they felt they had to be blamed for what happened to them. You know, so when you think about what is happening to women all over the world, you will just be shocked, you know, at, at the rate, you know, at which women suffer abuses the world over. It's so disappointing. It's so, it's so heart rendering. And, um, and I really wish that somebody will start listening to women Somebody will start caring for women. You know, look at the spate of killings we are having in Africa, especially in Nigeria, racial killing and all that stuff. You will see that 90% of those who have been, uh, you know, kidnapped and captured and tortured and being used for racial killings, they are females, you know. Must this continue? No. 
was that the intention of God? No. You know, the intention of God is that the women be protected. The intention of God is that the woman be respected. The intention of God is that the woman be honored. Be, you know, be, the, the woman be well esteemed. That is what God wants us to do. You know, I don't want to see anybody dishonoring my own mother, disrespecting my own mother, abusing my own mother, you know, and every woman is a potential mother, you know. So when you abuse one, you abuse all. I pray that the abuse of women all over the world will stop and that we will start appreciating women. All the women in the house, look at the house now, as it is now, is full of women. Sister Rose, Sister Dennis, uh, Sister Ada, Sister Miracle, all women. They are in the house, you know, and they, they are so, they are eager to learn. They are so uh, supporting, they are, you know, they are comforting, they are comforting, they are complimentary. Women, you are so blessed. I will continue to label you as a blessing. God bless you. One of the men is trying to prove to me now that there are men in the house also. Thank you. But the women came first, just as it happened, you know, by the tomb of Jesus the women always will show up first. I bless God for your life. Even in the churches, you know, you remove the women and the church will become empty and, uh, you know, it, dysfunctional. So women, you are just useful. You are a blessing everywhere. You are a blessing in the kingdom. You are a blessing in the society. You are a blessing at work. You are a blessing in the home. You are a blessing everywhere. And I pray that all of you, that you will continue to carry the oil of blessing wherever you go, in Jesus' name. God bless you. And lastly, let me also say this to our men, especially men in Africa, especially men of the, you know, the, the black uh, uh, race, you know. We, we lay so much emphasis on having male children, you know. We lay, in fact, too much emphasis. Sometimes a woman will go on out of her way, even risk her life in order to give birth to a male child. Because the men think it is the man that can, you know, continue to carry the family name. It is the man that can do this. It is the man can, that can do this. Who told you? Who told you? Everyone is important before God. The queen of England, the most powerful queen in the entire world is a woman, <laughs> is a woman. And there are women who have achieved so much in life. So giving back to a woman, or giving back to women is a blessing. In fact, every woman carries even seven times more blessing. Seven times more blessing. You know, the woman is, is, is multi in all her blessing. Multi in all her blessing. And let me, I, I, somebody sent this to me, and it really, uh, really blessed me concerning uh, uh, women all over the world. There's an article I received. Let me see if I can have it concerning the women folk. Um, okay, somebody sent this, this short article to me and wrote, Mark Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg has two daughters. Okay, Mark Zuckerberg, multi-billionaire, has two daughters. Barack Obama has two daughters. Kobe Bryant has four daughters. George W. Bush, George W. Bush has two daughters, twins. <clears throat> Bill and Hillary Clinton, they have one daughter. Okay, Chelsea. Bruce Willis, a popular multimillionaire actor, has five daughters. Dan Gauthier of Nigeria has three daughters. I mean, they are on and on and on and on like that. Great men, powerful men, you know, renowned men, men who are very rich, who are even extremely rich. Most of them have daughters, and that has not diminished their status. That has not reduced even their success in life. Hallelujah. And the, 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 to surprise you more, these daughters will carry on the good work that their fathers have, 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 uh, you know, have started. So, and these are all great men you know, who, 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 who gets, uh, uh, who didn't have to, uh, marry another woman because they wanted male children. They are great men who didn't have to divorce their wives because they wanted male, male children. No, they are great men who, who, was, who were happy and grateful to get God, even for the female children that they have. Hallelujah. 
with or without a male child, they, they, they have, or with or without male children, they have impacted humanity in their different ways and have marked their names in history. They will be remembered long after they are gone, not for uh, having male or female children, but for their contribution to humanity. You know, after Dangote is gone, after uh, Hillary and Bill are gone, after uh, who again, uh, W. Bush is gone, after Barack Obama and the wife, after they are gone, they will be remembered by what they have contributed to humanity, not by whether they had male or male children. So male or female children. So having female children should not be seen as a problem. And to cap it all, many of those in Africa who are crying, who are fighting their wives for not giving them male children, they are even poor people. There are people who don't have any, any, any inheritance. There are people who are not even a thousand years, not to talk of millionaires. There are people who are in the, the villages. There are people who don't have anything to pass on to the next generation. And they are looking for female children that will carry on the legacy of their name. For what? What is, what is your legacy? <laughs> what is your legacy? A man who is a failure is looking for a, a female child that will carry on his name. Meanwhile, you're already a failure. So what is in your name? What is in carrying on your name? So whether you have a male child or a female child, if God, if God has ordained your name to continue to reign on earth, male or female, your name will continue to reign. There are people who don't even have any at all. They don't have male, they don't have female. Oprah Winfrey, the popular Oprah Winfrey, does not have any child at all. <laughs> but she's, she's blessing so many children all over the world. And her name will continue to ring bell even after she's passed away. So I want all men who are pressurizing their women, who are making life uncomfortable, who do not even value the fact that their women went through nine months of pregnancy to bring out that female child. I want you to repent and begin to value your wife, begin to appreciate your wife, begin to celebrate those daughters. Because if you don't celebrate them today, it, be, it will become your undoing, your undoing tomorrow. Some of those female children will become ministers, will become queens, will become you know, business magnets. They will become people of impact and power. So why don't you love them and continue to appreciate them? God bless you. And Again, happy Women's Day. I hope I've been able to appreciate the women enough. You know, just enjoy your day. Let me uh, uh, show you this finally uh, to cap it all. I also got this card from somebody still to celebrate the Women's Day. Let me see. Let me see if we can read it. Uh, the Bible says, um, the, the card says, you are beautiful. Uh, I can't see it properly now. You are beautiful. You are brave. You are smart. You are funny. You are lovable. You are kind. And so much more. You are strength. And always will be strength. I love that. That is to every woman in the house. God bless you. May your crown never be taken. In Jesus' name, by another. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Happy Women's Day. Women Day. Uh, International Women's Day, rather. Okay, I want to celebrate everyone whose birthday it was last week or this week that is ending now. I celebrate especially my very, very good friend from of many years, you know, from our higher school days, Akin Lulufa Tiregun. God bless you. March 7 is your birthday. I rejoice with you and I pray that God will continue to add many more years to your age in Jesus' name. And as many as are there whose birthday falls on this week, I celebrate you. Happy birthday to my daughter, Emily Tonto. God bless you. May God add more years to your age in Jesus' name. May life get better and sweeter for you all. In Jesus' name, here is to everyone who is celebrating birthday today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Okay.
Okay, happy birthday to you. I really hope that all of you in the house, you have been able to help me do the sharing. You know, please share to as many friends as possible and to as many platforms as possible uh, because I've been engrossed in this thing of eulogizing, praising, and appreciating the women. I have forgotten to do some sharing myself. But if you have done it, then I believe it is done. Good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen, and happy even to be your anchor this morning. My name is Pastor Williams, and we are going to continue our discussion on jilted but not jaundiced. Jilted but not jaundiced. Good morning to you, my brother, Atumba Ola Gola, the uh, Babalaje and everything of Austria. <laughs> God bless you, my brother, Otumba Ola Gola. It's good to have you in the house. Okay, jilted, but not John Diced. Now, what do I mean now? Uh, to be jilted, you all know what it means to be jilted. It means to be dropped. It means to be, uh, uh, what, what again? Uh, to be dropped, to be disappointed, you know, to be, to be, to be cut off. It means to be cut off, you know. So if anybody has been jilted, if anybody has experienced being cut off, you know, especially when you least expected it, you know, sometimes you 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 saw the signs on the wall, but you ignored the signs, but and then eventually it happened. If you have experienced disappointment in life and you have refused to allow disappointment to destroy you, then you are the one I'm talking to this morning. Jilted, abandoned, dumped, but not destroyed. That is what I mean by jilted, but not jaundiced, okay? Or jaundiced, as you may want to see it. Jilted, but not jaundiced. Okay, let me see how I this the how I defined jaundice here. Okay, to be jaundiced or to be jaundiced is to be bitter, is to be filled with resentment, cynicism, is to be filled with bitterness, is to be filled with anger, is to be filled with rot. You know, and when when that takes over, when rot, when anger, you know, takes over because of disappointment, we, when bitterness takes over you because you are disappointed, then many, many bad things will start happening. Many bad things will start happening, you know. So I want to say it, it is almost, it is almost normal. It is kind of normal in this life to experience disappointment. I don't know of any human being who will say, oh, I've never been disappointed in my life. Then that means you have never lived among human beings. You know, I want to say with reverence and humility that even God himself experienced disappointment when he created man and woman in the garden. He didn't create them to destroy them. He didn't create them that they may be destroyed. He created them so that they can have eternal fellowship with him. But when Adam and his wife fell, you see, they disappointed God. They disappointed God. And even after God, you know, had destroyed the first world through flood, you know, and uh, the family of Noah, you know, Noah and, you know, eight, eight people, eight members of his family were, were saved. And they now started a new, a new, you know, they started to populate the world afresh. Not long after that, the Bible says the children, the children of God started having affairs with the daughters of men. You know, some will interpret that as, you know, copulation or relationship, romantic relationship between angels and, and human beings, which led to the birth of giants and all that stuff. Okay, we are not going to start arguing about that. But not, not I mean, sooner, as soon as the, the new world, began you know, to take shape, sin, you know, began to manifest. Even see what happened to Noah, 
see how he got drunk, see how he had to curse one of his sons or his grandson and all those things. And God looked at all the things, all the things that human beings were doing. And the Bible says, oh, God said, oh, Lord. I, I, I mean, God said, I will no longer, I, will, can, I cannot be forever angry. I cannot stay, you know, disappointed with men. They are just human beings anyway. They are just human beings. So he said he will never destroy the world again with flood. He said human beings will be human beings, you know. So if God could be disappointed, you know, there are places in the Bible where the Bible says it's God repented that he created, he did this. It has a, a language of disappointment, you know. So if God himself could be disappointed by men, then who is a man that will not be disappointed by men? Anyone can experience disappointment, my brother. Anyone can experience disappointment, my sister. What you do with that experience will determine the next level you go after that experience. How you handle your disappointment in life will now determine, you know, what happens to you, what level of life you will move to, whether the lower level or a higher level. Now, if you are able to turn your disappointment, your disadvantage into, you know, something that will energize you for your next level and not allow it to turn you into a bitter person, you will move to a higher level. Your experience will become a source of strength to you. But when you allow your disappointment to turn you into somebody who is bitter, who is cynic, who, who is wrathful, who is angry, and these things take over your entire being, you will go lower in your status as a human being. And last week, uh, let me say again that I, I welcome all your contributions to this topic. It's a very sensitive topic because there is, I mean, there are many people out there who are suffering the pains of disappointment. And disappointment happens even as we talk now. People, I mean, disappointment happens every day. Some of you experience disappointment as single ladies, single men. Some of you have experienced disappointment in relationship, you know, uh, contracted and jilted. You know, somebody who confessed love to you last night, this morning is confessing hatred, is beating you, is kicking you. You know, somebody who said you are the only thing, you are the best thing that has ever happened to him. You know, after a week, after a month, it turns you into a punching bag. A woman who says, I love you with all my life, drops poison in your drink, and it's only God that saved you. You know, a friend you think should be able to scratch your back has now put uh, nails. You know, there's a song like that. He has put nails. He has, he has put uh, iron nails to scratch your back so that you can bleed. A friend you say should be able to blow, blow a speck out of your eye has put dry pepper in his mouth to blow your eye. You know, so we are, we, 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 are disa we face disappointment. So oftentimes from our spouses also, we face disappointment in our marriages, we face disappointment even in our relation with friends, with neighbors, with colleagues, you know, parents, children, relationship. We can face disappointment anywhere, you know, but I'm concentrating more on, you know, relational disappointment or, to be more precise, you know, uh, marital disappointment, whether on the road to the altar or after you have climbed down from the altar, you will be shocked that there are people whose story of disappointment started the very day they said, yes, I do. The very day they said, yes, I do, the problem started the monster in the spouse will just show up. The monster will just come out. You know, there are some things, you know, you see on social media, there are some videos I've received, and sometimes I wonder if these videos could even be true because they will seem like comedy. I mean, not like drama. They will still, I mean, you ask yourself, can a human being do this to another human being? Disappointment. I was watching and listening to the story of a woman, a black American woman, who was abused at the age of eight. Abused. 
And when I use the word abuse, you know I'm talking about rape. Abuse at the age of eight. And then this girl grew up seeing the, the father beating the mother. And this kind of deposited some, some hatred inside of her. Hatred for marriage, hatred for home, hatred for relationship. So the mother ran away from the home and she was left to stay with her father. And the father had a girlfriend after that. And the father would beat this, this girlfriend to the point of even uh, near coma. And the girl would be washing these things. And the day the girl dared to even say, Papa, Daddy, but stop. The man descended on the girl and beat the girl and held the girl by the throat. That she fainted. The girl fainted. He, tur he turned his anger on the girl. And the girl fainted. And the, the man was eventually arrested and he was sentenced to, I don't know how many years in jail for child abuse and everything. But even when the girl thought, oh, it was over, at the age of 13, you know, she moved, she moved into her, her mother, was now staying with her mother. And then there was this neighbor who was showing kindness to her. Whenever the mother was not around, he said, oh, please come. Let me teach you some things, show you some things. At the age of 13, after this girl had began to trust this guy, he, he started abusing her. The girl was so shocked that at the age of 13, a man could be so depraved. I mean, if somebody could even rape a three-month-old three child, seven-month-old baby, who are we talking about? We have monsters all over the world. We have, we have men who are, who, are, who are walking around in the flesh of human beings, but inside of them are demons. In fact, they are worse than demons. All these things are happening all over the world. And at the age of 13, this girl was raped again. And then in the college, she was abused again. And uh, subsequently, she, she became so bitter, you know, that she, she began to sell her body. She became a strip artist. She would go to the club and strip. And she said, for her, it was a way of getting back. It was a way of fighting back. You know, when men will, you know, run around her and try and touch her and all those things, for her, it was a way of getting back. So it was, it was a revenge, a revenge trip, a revenge journey, you know. And eventually she subscribed to being a porn star, you know, until one day, one day, one day, even as a porn star, she was suffering untold abuse. She was having the money, getting the money, but she never enjoyed peace. Until one day, you know, she cried because her, her, the one who was her director kidnapped her, imprisoned her, and was abusing her constantly, you know, locked her up and said she will remain there until she will, she will abuse her to death. And at that point, this woman looked up to heaven and he said, God, if you will deliver me from this, I will serve you forever. And strangely, you know, when she was crying and praying, a neighbor had her cry. Neighbor that never had all her cry these, all these days. A neighbor had her cry, reported to the police. And uh, that was how she was delivered. To, today, that woman is a minister of God. She goes around telling her story. She goes around telling her story. So you can experience disappointment. There are some people's stories that are bitterer, that are more more you know, more touching than the one I just told. But what do you do with your story? What do you do with your disappointment? That will determine where you go from where you are. Now, I want to start seeing contributions in the house. It is boring when you are allowing me alone to do all the talking. Last week, I told you about what some of the causes of disappointment. The list is in exhaustive. I want, I want to say you cannot exhaust the list where well, I mentioned some things and I'm sure for those of you who were in the house, you will remember that I mentioned that unrealistic or fantasy, fantasy expectations, when your, your expectations are unrealistic, you know, when, you, the, the, when the truth is revealed, when, it, the rea when reality downs on you, then you will know that your expectations, expectations have been too high and what follows will be disappointment. So 
unrealistic or fantasy expectations will cause disappointment when you superimpose your vision, you know, on another person. This is how you want things done. And even though that person is not being wired to do things that same way, but you want to force your own vision on somebody, at the end of the day, the person might endure a few weeks, a few months, or perhaps a few years, but eventually the person will start being him or herself, and then you will start suffering disappointment again. Uh, what more uh, did we talk about? Okay. <clears throat> Illusionistic. Illusionist, illusionistic trust in your ability to change. When you have this illusion that you can change the other person. Oh, don't worry. This is how the person is now. I will change him. I will change her. You will be terribly disappointed. Another point was ignoring obvious red lights. You know, sometimes the signs are there, but you are ignoring them. You are saying, oh, it will be okay. It will be okay. Chances are that you eventually suffer disappointment. We also called, spoke about goose goose chasing when you are chasing an unrealistic goal you know that this thing is not for you this thing is not realistic like i told you about a man who said his desire was to to marry uh, serena williams and it was it was an unrealistic goal you know so when you are goose chasing you know goose chasing at the end of the day you realize that the gap between you and that goal is so wide and nobody can help you to bridge the gap you know, so when you are goose chasing, you will suffer the disappointment. When you walk back to the stone that once rejected you, when you walk back to the man, the woman that once rejected you, that once abused you, I mean, excuse me, it's the other way around. When you walk back to a man you, you once rejected, somebody who once rejected, somebody you once insulted, somebody who tried to show you love, and you rejected the person, the stone you once rejected, you now go back to that stone, to want to build on that stone. Chances are that you'll be walking into a vengeance trap. I've experienced it. I've seen it in many times. Somebody you disappointed, somebody you, you disrespected, somebody you insulted, somebody who wanted you and you went after, I mean, you went after or with another person. Then when you have experienced disappointment in that person, you now come back to the person you have disappointed, you know, as a way of escape. Chances are that you'll be walking into a trap, you know, a trap of vengeance. So walking back to the stone you once rejected can, you know, lead to disappointment. Another point we raise is failing to heed needs, failing to heed needs, your, your needs in life. You know what your needs are. You know who you are. You know what you want. You know what makes you happy. You know, sometimes because of desperation, we just push our knees aside. We say, okay, just let me just, let me just do this. Let me just get married. Let me just, you know, let people, let me take people's eyes off me. Let me take people's tongues off me. Let people at least respect me that I'm a married man or I'm a married woman. And then you don't take into consideration your basic needs, what you need in a woman, what you need in a man things that will make you happy. You, you, you dump yourself and throw yourself into the market, you know, without care. And then eventually you will, you know, you will contract that marriage, you will start that relationship, but chances are that you will suffer disappointment at the end of the day. You know, each time Bishop David Depo speaks about what happened when he met his wife now, his wife-to-be then, and he, he said he sat with the woman and spelled out his vision, his plans for life, you know, the, 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 what will be involved, you know, <laughs> what will be involved, the challenges and everything. This is what I want to do. This is my vision for life. Do you think you can live with it? Do you think you can still be, you can still be my wife? The woman said yes. So he wrote everything down and they signed. <laughs> they signed. Now, I'm not saying you should go on and sign. To those of you who are, who are not married, I'm not saying you should write the things down and sign. But before you get married, you should be able to express your need. What kind of a man are you looking forward to having with you for the rest of your life? 
What kind of a woman are you looking forward to having with you for the rest of your life? You should lay bare your needs so that you people can agree. Otherwise, you will suffer disappointment. Then another thing that causes disappointment is inability to communicate. Our inability to communicate. You are seeing things, but you are keeping quiet. Sometimes you communicate, but you communicate at the wrong time and in the wrong way. And then things will escalate. And then things will get out of hand so much that the center will no longer be able to hold. There are no two perfect people. And you can hardly find a perfect relationship. Only God, God, you know, is perfect in everything he does. You know, we are human beings. And because we are human, we are prone to doing things that we betray our imperfection one way or the other, okay? But you must learn to communicate, communicate in the right way, uh, use the right language and communicate in the right, at the right time. You know, our inability to effectively communicate will eventually lead to disappointment. And then unwillingness to branch out. This is another point. Our unwillingness to branch out. Some of you, you have suffered disappointment because you are following the same kind of person. I want him this. I want a sportsman. I want a sportsman. I want a sportsman. I want an athletic, athletic woman. I want an athletic woman. I want a woman who can sing. I want a woman who can sing. And then you dated the first woman who can sing disappointment. The second woman, disappointment. The third woman, disappointed. Disappointment. That means there is something. There is something that runs through that, that area of your need that is not working well. You need to sit down and reevaluate and be ready to branch out. Maybe you need to change the environment. Maybe you need to, you know, re readjust you know, your definition of what you want or who you want in a way that will not diminish you or reduce your self-esteem in a way that will not destroy your joy. But you can always readjust your, your, you know, your table of content, you know, realistically. You know, so sometimes we are unwilling to branch out. The people, the same kind of persons that have, have, have disappointed us over and over again, we keep chasing after that same type, or that same kind of people. And then disappointment continues unabated. So when we are unwilling to branch out, we are likely to suffer disappointment. When we value our ego over connection, you know, when all you want is ego, 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 you are just uh, fanning your ego, you are firing your ego in a relationship. It's always about you, myself, and I. You will suffer, suffer disappointment. When we engage in, you know, play, play, uh, uh, game, game, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, blaming, uh, playing blame games, excuse me now. When we engage in playing, blame games we always blame you always blame the other person you never search yourself and ask what is it i'm contributing what is it i'm doing that is turning this man into a monster what is it that i'm doing that is making this woman angry with me all the time when all you do is play the blame game you will suffer disappointment when you avoid issues rather than face them you pretend you will suffer disappointment when you settle for not enough you know available and not what you want. It just this one is available. Let me grab her. I'll let me grab him without satisfying your need, without meeting your, you know, innate desire. Those things you want in the woman and the man, you will suffer disappointment. And let me add this immaturity can also cause disappointment when you are engaged or you are having a relationship with somebody who is not emotionally mature, you know, enough to handle the issues of life to undo anger, to undo this, to undo that. You know, when somebody's immaturity is at the lowest edge, it can lead to disappointment because the person who is trying to help you to mature can really get fed up one day and turn his back on you and he's gone. Impatience can also lead to disappointment. These are points I didn't mention last week. And uh, some of you also offered, contributed these points online. So your impatience, can actually lead to disappointment. The Bible says God makes everything beautiful in his own time. So if God has set the end of the year for that breakthrough to happen, then why don't you wait for the timing of God? Or sometimes 
uh, you are fast, but your partner is slow, you know, but he's making things happen. He's doing, he's trying his best, you know, let's learn to acknowledge, you know, each, each other's effort, each other's best. Even when the person is not moving, moving at your own speed, you know, if you are not patient with the person you are traveling with, you will end up traveling alone. Another thing that can cause disappointment is deception. Is deception. When somebody has deceived you or when you have deceived somebody, you know, and so much deception is out there. Even in the church, there's so much deception. There are people who lie about being born again. There are people who lie about this, about that. They lie about their orientation. They lie about their upbringing. They lie about their age. They lie about their, their name. They, they lie about just everything. You know, so when you engage in the art of deception, you will eventually fall into deception yourself. And also when you engage in the art of deception, you will eventually be found out. I think I told you on this platform about a guy, a man who after about 20 something years, you know, when he was supposed to be celebrating, I think his 60th birthday, he now told the wife that he was actually 70 something, you know, that he was actually 70 something, that he lied about his age. And the woman was so dis devastated, you know. There was also a case of a woman, you know, who after about, who had, a 17 year old, after almost, I mean, after about 17 years, after about 17 years, you know, of having a relation with a woman, a, I mean, a man, they were married 17 years. And then it was, it now came, you know, into the open that the woman had a child. The child that used to call her auntie, auntie, staying with her mother was actually her son. And the man didn't know. You know, so deception. So when you engage in the art of deception, you will eventually be deceived yourself. When you are discovered, it can lead to enormous, it can lead to very painful disappointment, both to yourself and to the one who you have been deceiving. Hallelujah. Somebody he, he, he comes and is, is lying to you about his wife. You know, that woman don't mind that. She's not this. She doesn't know how to take care of me and blah, blah, blah. She's not that. She's this. She's that. Lie. Tell a lot of lies. And you don't have a way of cross-checking with the woman. No. And then you fall into the man's trap. You go on and marry the man. Two, three years, four years, five years. The man is saying, you know, telling the same lies. He told you about the first wife, he's telling a, a third woman. Because you never even have the chance to find out what happened. What happened to that first marriage? And you just buy every lie that you are told. And then before you know it, the same lie will start chasing you. That is deception. You know, deception. And then before you can say, Jack, you are falling into the pit of disappointment. And you'll be reeling in pains. You know, so deception can lead to imp uh, disappointment. Then judgment from those you think should support you. You know, sometimes because we are not perfect, we can make mistakes in life. And sometimes when you fall into mistakes, you fall into error and you are willing to, to make amend. You know, then uh, humanly speaking, you are looking out for those who can support you those who can encourage you, <clears throat> those who can say, okay, don't worry, you don't have to stay down, rise up again, those who can hold your hand to rise, these are the people you are looking for. But oftentimes, the person you thought will be your supporter the most is the person that will disappoint you. You know, time will not permit me to play the video of, a, you know, a young lady who was abused and raped, and, you know, the person, he, she really... She, I mean, she, who was closest to her, told her it would have been better if you died. It, it would have been better you died when you were raped. And this thing became more pain to the lady than the rape itself. So sometimes when those you think should be able to support you are the ones judging you, it can be so disappointing. Who? Okay, you are not talking. <laughs> Nobody is talking. Abeke, where are you now? <laughs> okay, good morning to you, Taiwo. God bless you. I'm excited you are here. You weren't here last uh, Saturday, so you have heard all I said last Saturday, the summary of it all. 
Good morning, Rita. God bless you and to you know and your family. May the Lord continue to honor you in Jesus' name. I give my women's day greetings to those of you who came late. Please replay the video so that you can hear how I praised you and how I blessed you know all the women. And I pray you stay blessed in Jesus' name. Okay, let me see if I can. I don't intend staying long today. Today, I will just add today about the risk. You know, what disappointment can do to you. What disappointment can do to you. Actually, I want to, let me say, I want to talk about how to disallow disappointment from destroying you. You know, how to disallow being jilted, you know, from turning you into being jaundiced or being jaundiced, how to disallow being dumbed from turning you into being destroyed. You know, that's what I want to talk about. So I will briefly go into that as part one of how to disallow this argument from destroying you and then next Saturday, uh, as God willing, as God is willing and God enables, I will do a follow-up on how to disallow disappointment from destroying you. Now, let me see if I can show you uh, <clears throat> a video about disappointment. Then I will want you to comment on it. I showed you a video last Saturday, oh, I don't have that video again, what happened? About the lady who said, I wish jackals would just not only kill my ex, but tear him into pieces and eat him up. Uh, those of you who were here, I have deleted the video now. That was the lady's reaction you know, to this thing that I wish, I wish I could jackals would just uh, get my my ex. Let me see if I still have the video. Okay, I have it here. Oh, I can't upload it. Oh wow, why? What happened? Okay, it has to be MP4. No. Anyway, I can't locate it right now. And uh, so touching. Okay, I should be able to open this. Let me see. The way I hate my ex. Mm. I wish he could literally meet a bunch of hyenas. Mm. I don't want him to just die. I want the hyenas to eat him to the bone. Okay, I want the hyenas to eat him, not just die. Now, that, that is the impact of disappointment. I'm sure you could hear the voice of bitterness, the voice of anger, the voice of murderous rage coming from me. I wouldn't know. I didn't see the whole the whole video. This this was just a short clip sent to me by a friend. I wouldn't know what happened to that woman. I wouldn't know what that woman did to that, uh, what the man did to her, what her ex did to her. But you could hear from her voice that she's so disappointed that she's not even open to forgiveness. She's not open for any other thing other than that, you know, Hyenas should pounce on the guy, kill the guy, and eat him up to the bone. That is what disappointment can do. Now, let me show you another case of disappointment. I got a video. Uh, what's the name of this guy? Uh, Yul Edoshe into, interviewed this uh, gospel singer. You know, a friend sent the video to me. I want you to listen to what this girl has to say. And then we can discuss it. Which is right? Yeah. I got it. 
permit me to still ask this. Of course, it's your private life. You must not answer that. You don't, you don't owe us anything. But your fans seem to... And by the way, you have a lot of fans. I checked you out on Facebook. You know. mm. Yes, you have a lot of people who love what you do. <laughs> <laughs> the ministry is growing. Your fans seem to be asking a lot of questions. Uh, maybe the, the men who like you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they say... One sent this one in and said that, that you're actually married. And then you're saying you're single. What's, who's, who's telling the truth? Someone said you're married. Yeah. Is it true? They will always find a way to expose their, their which is their grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> so this person is a witch or wizard trying to expose his grandfather. He's a witch. Okay. Yeah. Um, will I call it marriage? Or I don't know. But I heard that. What what is the highest um or the how will I put it? I think it's which celebrity there is a there is one person that they said her marriage lasted for twelve days or what? Okay, a Nigerian celebrity? I don't know, I think it was foreign or something. Okay. Yeah. So. Was it the same with yours? Uh, my own is actually. Five days. <laughs> it's a five days. I mean, two. <laughs> <laughs> two days marriage. <laughs> How many? Uh, dead on arrival. So that means the same day? The same day. Same day you got married, it ended. White wedding or traditional marriage? Traditional marriage. Traditional marriage. And it ended the same day. What yeah. happened? Hmm? What happened? Yeah, I, I want to know. I know you'll be interested. I want to know. I know you'll be interested. And I know the people who want to know. Like, what happened? I don't know you'll be interested. Ah, uh, this is, this one is, this one should be a story for another, another day. No, but we have all the time. <laughs> we have enough time. Today. This one should be a story for another day. It's really, 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 really. For real? <sighs> yeah. When was that? Not so long ago. This year? No. Last year? Mm, 2019. 2019, okay. That's two years ago. Yeah. What happened? That was two years ago. 1st of June. 2019. 2019. You got married. I got married. Then you... I didn't see the man after... Okay, I, I got married and we got home the next day. That was the last time I saw him. In the morning. It, didn't, it was not even up to 24 hours. It wasn't up to 12. Okay, let's say 12 hours. No, it wasn't up to. It wasn't and what happened? So he ran away. No, he, just, he was like, let me go somewhere. I'm coming back. And he never returned. And from there, he called off the marriage. What, why? He actually called it off, not me. He yeah, many, he many people reason. thought I was the one that called it off, but I didn't. I didn't call it off. He called it off. Why? He didn't even tell me that he's done. He called my parents that he's no more interested. Like, after like how many days, when I was still calling, 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 I was calling. He was not picking, call me, but he's always online he's always calling people i know people will be calling me you know i still don't know what happened till now i don't know what happened i actually thought i was pregnant before the this stuff okay sorry before you guys got married how long did you know each other one year one year you dated for one year yeah okay he's actually based abroad okay so we dated for one year what attracted me was one he, year steadily was, or one year on and off on was, and off he he was doing the same thing he he does the same thing i do so you know when is, you are acting somehow you might be attracted to an actor too that okay. the you way act? it is. no i'm just giving an instance oh, okay i don't act okay so but like me i sing he sings too okay. that that's it so and i always wanted to marry someone that understands what I do. Because the way you people don't stay is the way I don't stay too. You get? So if you are someone that needs a housewife, 
it's not me because it won't work yeah. uh -huh. so okay <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the the story is longer than i thought anyway <clears throat> this lady got married <clears throat> got married one day and then every ma everything the ceremony went where the traditional wedding went where the parents were there the family members were there and then they got home and when they got home in the evening of the same day, uh, the guy's friends came. So the guy said he was going out with his friends, you know, to shield around and he was coming back. That in itself was a, already a bad sign. Because if you are, you are the, the same night you are getting married, it should not be the same night you are going with friends to go and shield. But this guy said he was going with some friends to go and shield. And that was how he left. He didn't come back the whole night. And then the following morning, he came back. And what happened? He started picking his things and he said he was done. He was going back to US or from wherever he came back came from. And that was how he abandoned this woman. And that's why the woman said, dead on arrival. Dead on arrival. Now what how will you ad what will you advise the woman to do now i want to hear i mean just look at this story how do you think somebody should handle that you got married it's not that you met the man on monday and then on tuesday you married him no you had a one year long of courtship i mean good in to the extent you now both agreed you were going to get married and you got married and the man brought all the bride price, bride things and everything. And the same evening, he packed his load and left. I mean, okay, the same evening he went out, never even slept. He, he, not, he didn't even have one night's nice sleep. He left. The following morning, he came to take his things and he left for good. And he never looked back. How, how do you evaluate this? I want somebody to talk to me. How do you evaluate this kind of... I mean, this, this is... This is it's, it's like something out of the blues. It's like a movie. Don't you think? It, it's just like a movie. When I watch the thing, and it's not a movie. This is a real-life interview by Yule Doshe. And the lady herself is, is a singer. She's a gospel artist. And it happened. How, 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 how will they feel? I mean, I cannot imagine that, you know, thank God it, it didn't happen to me and it wouldn't happen to me. But the person it happened to is also a human being. Dead on arrival, dead on arrival. You know, I've had, I had a case also about, of, uh, you know, I think I've told you of uh, Bernard Blessing, who, man of God, great man of God, prophet and everything, met the lady, you know, courted the lady, prayed about the lady, did everything, and the lady was all angelic all throughout the courtship days. And then they got married and then went on honeymoon. And on the first night of the honeymoon, the lady said, yes, there is something I need to tell you. He said, she said, yeah, I'm sorry I didn't tell you this before we got married, but I was afraid. Now, she now told the man that her womb has been removed. First night of your honeymoon. How will you react to this? I mean, if somebody comes to you, your friend, your sister, your colleague, your schoolmate, to share a story like this with you. What will you, what will you say? I need your comment. That's why I'm waiting. God bless you, Dickness. Laura, yes, the lady in that video who, who said she wished Jakas could tear, tear the man. I'm, 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 not, I'm not condemning her. I'm not criticizing her. I'm just showing to you, you know, what disappointment could do to others. 
so that those who are in the habit of disappointing people, those who are in the habit of destroying people's emotions can learn that disappointment, if not well handled, can actually turn one into a monster, can turn one into a bitter soul, an angry soul. In fact, it can damn one's soul if one is not uh, careful. So yeah, she, she, she spoke out of pain and sadness because of what she went through. It takes the glory of God in our lives to be able to handle sad situations. I agree 100%, Dickness Laura. It takes the glory of God to be able to handle some disappointment in one's life. Anyway, I've shown you some story. I, 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 I wanted you to say something about this story. Okay? If you are not talking, then I will keep talking. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, very sad. It is, you know, dead on arrival. And uh, may I have some other stories, but we'll save it maybe for the next ep ep episode. I will show you some videos also. So, but let me round up here. How to disallow disappointment from destroying you. And when I say you, don't even look over your shoulder to your neighbor. Just concentrate on yourself. Because one is bound to experience disappointment one way or the other in life. Some in the least expected ways, you can experience disappointment. Why? Because you are dealing with human beings. Even God, while dealing with human beings, was disappointed by human beings. So human beings will always disappoint. So if you have experienced disappointment in your life, you are not alone. And it's not a disease. It's not because you are bad. It's not because God has cursed you. No. You know, anybody can experience disappointment. I keep telling you, anybody can experience disappointment. But one thing is that with God on your side, you can actually, you know, build a ladder with every stone that has been thrown at you. You can use these stones to build a ladder that will take you to the next level in life. And I say with God on your side. Because like Dickness Laura observed, it will take God, you know, to be able to forgive some people and not even be able to forgive some people, to be able to forgive yourself. Sometimes it's not even about the person who has, who has hurt you or who has, who has disappointed you. Sometimes it's about you yourself. Sometimes you feel those so disappointed in yourself for even allowing such a human being to come and mistreat you, to come and deceive you, to come and abuse you. Sometimes there are relationships you went into. You, you even lowered yourself in the first place and you allowed this guy or this woman to be part of your life. You know, he, this person is even not your stock, but you lowered yourself and you allowed that person to be part of your life. And the same person you gave such an opportunity to you sacrifice to be with has turned around to disappoint you. It happens. What do you do? You know, let me quickly tell you here that The number one, the number one thing disappointment does to us is that it embitters us. So disappointment, if not well and would ultimately will lead to bitterness, resentment, anger, rage, bitterness against the person who has disappointed you. And like I said, sometimes bitterness against yourself. So I read something in the book of Hebrews. Chapter 12, verse 15. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. Let me tell you, let me read to you what it says. It says, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. You see? So we need to be careful. Lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Bitterness, you know, disappointment can make a man or a woman to fall short of the glory of God. I'm telling you. Because sometimes, 
you know, it will just, it will take the, the passion out of you. It will destroy your very, the, 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 the fabric, the, the foundation of your, your compassion, your emotion. It will break you. It will turn love into hatred overnight. If, you know, God is not on your side, bitterness, I mean, disappointment is so, it, it can be so devastating. Unless God st steps in, it can destroy. So he said, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Less any root of bitterness. Root of bitterness. What is the root of bitterness? Disappointment. Less any root of bitterness springing up. Cause trouble. So when you are allow bitterness to give birth, I mean, when you allow disappointment to give birth to bitterness in your life, then it will cause trouble. And then by this, many will become defiled. You know, in the next part, in the, in the next or po and possibly the last part of this series, I'll be talking about, you know, how you can, what you need to do, you know, so that disappointment will not destroy you, so that you will not be destroyed, you know, by disappointment. The ugly part is sometimes the person who has disappointed you is busy enjoying his life. He doesn't even care what is going on in your life. He doesn't even want to know whether you exist. He doesn't want to know what is happening to you, your children, your anything. He doesn't even care. You know? So you have yourself to care about. You have yourself to think about. You have yourself to, 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 you know, to talk to. Because the person who caused it is even way out of your reach. If you shout from now till eternity, he cannot even hear you. She cannot even hear you. Some, some people are even excited that they were able to disappoint you. Some people are even joyful that they were able to, to jilt you, to dump you, you know. And so if you are not careful and you concentrate so much energy on getting back at that person and doing this, it will lead to trouble. That's exactly what the Bible is saying. It will lead to trouble, you know. So what can disappointment cause? This is the, the, the part I want to quickly conclude with on how to disallow disappointment from leading to destruction. What can disappointment cause in our lives? I've told you, disappointment can give birth to bitterness, and bitterness can give birth to trouble, and trouble can give birth to defilement. Please don't forget that. Okay? But beyond that, people who are, dis who are disappointed, I wrote here, are at a greater risk of physical or emotional uh, uh, difficulties. So when you are disappointed, you are at a risk, you know, of having, excuse me, having physical or emotional difficulties or both. Such individuals appear to have a greater frequency of headaches. So disappointment can actually cause physical problem, problems, headaches, gastrointestinal difficulties, you know, sometimes you will be having moist palm. You will be sweating in your palm, you know, because of disappointment. Okay, God bless Ruth Lamy. Okay, who is Ruth Lamy now? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that, that's my daughter. That's my daughter from Rotterdam. Okay, uh, let me see what you have written here. Uh, pressure from your family can lead you to do such. Maybe maybe the man don't love the girl because of the pressure from his family make him to get married to the girl. Yes, it is true. It is true. Pressure can make you contract marriage with somebody you do actually love. And Ruth wrote more, disappointment, pain, and anger make some people to talk like the way the lady talked. Maybe her ex hurts her so much. I agree with you. Okay, let me continue. So, Disappointment can actually uh, uh, breathe bitterness. Bitterness can breathe trouble. Trouble can breathe defilement. So trouble, defilement, you, it can lead to, you know, uh, uh, risk of physical and emotional difficulty. You know, the person can have frequent headaches, gastrointestinal difficulties, moist palm, and over perspiration, you'll be sweating. Even when everybody is feeling cold, you can start sweating profusely uh, and such others. And for some others, 
disappointment can have a long lasting effect on them. But the most dangerous possible effect that disappointment can have on any man is bitterness, as I've said. And um, what can bitterness do to you? What can bitterness do to you? Number one, I want you to know that bitter people find it difficult to forgive. Bitter people find it difficult to forgive. So if you are bitter and you are eaten up by bitterness, I mean, I sympathize with you. I, in fact, empathize with you. I, I am really, yeah, I feel for you if you have suffered disappointment. But like I told you some minutes back now, and I'm saying it again, if you don't work on that disappointment, it will just destroy you. Meanwhile, the person who has disappointed you will keep on enjoying his or her life. So bitter people find it difficult to forgive and they hold grudges for long. Now, time will not even permit me to talk about unforgiveness, you know, in quotes, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is killing yourself, denying yourself the, the grace, the, the, the joy of being happy again. Unforgiveness is carrying somebody's headache. Unforgiveness, unforgiveness is killing yourself for the offender to live. Unforgiveness is more damaging to you than actually the person who has offended you because you are the one who is feeling the pain. You are the one who is feeling the discomfort. You are the one who is losing your head. You are the one who is losing your head. You are the one who is losing your peace. Each time you think about that person, it, something happens to you. Something happens to your emotion. Your anger is stirred up and things like that. So bitterness can actually lead to unforgiveness. Bitter people find it difficult to forgive. Number two, people, bitter people remain stagnant in their pain. Bitter people, there is a tendency for somebody who is bitter not to move forward, but to just be dancing around the circle, around the circle. If it were not for him, if it were not for him, if it were not, not for this lady, if, if it were not for what he did to me or she did to me. And then before you know it, you are just dancing around the mountain of your pain. Bitter people have the tendency to stagnate in their pain. Number three, bitter people generalize everyone. You know, sometimes it's, it's, it is bitter. I mean, it is difficult for a bitter person to start a new relationship. Okay? Sometimes it is very difficult for a bitter person to trust anyone again. And on the other hand, sometimes bitterness can turn you into, into a prey. It can make you, you know, susceptible to, to hurt, to pain, to abuse. Because sometimes... You know, like the the thirteen year old girl, girl I spoke to you about, who had been abused at the age of eight. You know, the father tried to kill her at the age of ten, and at the age of thirteen, the the man in the neighborhood who was showing kindness to her, you know, became the person who turned out to be an abuser. Also, you know, I could imagine a thirteen year old girl who has suffered so much, you know, deprivation and abuse. He, he now saw somebody who was showing kindness and if you are not careful you will be so broken in your emotion that you just walk into the arms of anybody meanwhile that person might just be another abuser in these guys so bitterness can make you generalize everyone but on the other hand bitterness can make you fall into another trap of disappointment bitter people Number five, I think, bitter people misdirect their hurt, frustration, or anger. Bitter people misdirect their hurt, their frustration, on ang or anger. Sometimes you can direct your hurt against your own children. You can direct your bitterness against the family of the man or the family of the woman. You can begin to hate anything that connects the person who can, that connects with the person who has disappointed you. So you just generalize your reaction. Bitterness can make you generalize your reaction. Anybody that has to do with that person who has disappointed you becomes a target of your anger. 
that is possible. And then bitter people misdirect their heart, frustration, and anger. Okay, I said that now. Then pe bitter people dish out what they cannot take. If you are not careful, the same thing somebody has done to you because you want to avenge. You now want to do even much more to others. You want to do even much more to others. You know, I have the video of one very wicked man. Excuse me to use that language. You know, I think this happened in South Africa or Zimbabwe or something. This guy contracted AIDS. He contracted AIDS. And he thought the best way to get back was to infect as many women as possible with this virus. And as, as, as at the time of interview, he had, he had, he had, had intercourse with, I think, more than 20 women already, unprotected intercourse. And they asked him, why are you doing this? He said, because I want to spread it. I just want every, people to feel the pain I'm feeling. You know? So sometimes, you know, bitterness can make you dish out what you hate to take. Okay? Bitter people don't know how to compromise. When you are so consumed by bitterness, you will stand on your ground. You, you don't want to compromise because you are afraid if you bend a little, you'll be disappointed again. But meanwhile, for a relationship to work, we must be able to step out of our own zone and meet our partner at a, a point. You know, we must be able to compromise a little. But it is difficult for bitter people to compromise. Bitter people have an all but all or nothing mentality. It is either all or nothing. I want all or nothing. You know, if you can't give me everything, then you can go. I've been disappointed before. So I want everything that I, I had missed. I want it in this new relationship or you can go. Even when it is unrealistic to be that way. Bitter people are ungrateful. There's a tendency for bitter people to be ungrateful because bitterness can eat you so much, eat you up so much that you even fail to be grateful to God for what he's doing in your life. When that man kicked you, when that man boxed you, when that woman broke a bottle on your head, you survived it. When that man left you in the cold, when that woman walked out of your life, when you were sick, you survived it. If you are not careful, you will forget to be grateful to God because of bitterness. So bitter people have the tendency to be ungrateful. Bitter people uh, have the tendency to make mountains out of more, more, uh, more hills. There's a tendency to exaggerate your pain. Bitter people have tendency to exaggerate their pain. And then bitter people tend to be hypocritical. They contradict themselves a lot, you know. That is when you allow bitterness to control you. You know, today you are hot, today you are cold, today, no, it's not like that. Well, no, I'm not angry. I know I'm upset and things like that. It makes you unstable and hypocritical. So what am I saying in essence? The best thing is to pray, not to allow disappointment to destroy you. The important part is to remember there are various steps to handle your disappointment. There are various steps by which you can handle your disappointment. And these are the steps I'll be talking about next week if the Lord tarries. And that is it today. God bless you. Any question or contribution? Sometimes it is not bitterness, but inability to be able to trust again. Yes, yes. You know, bitterness can make you, it's one of the points uh, that I raise uh, bitter people you know of course generalized bitter people are unable to compromise again you know inability to trust again you know but then you have to just remember that uh, not every mister is the same mister not every miss or missus is the same, you know. Not you know. There is a proverb that says, "If you close your eyes for evil people to pass, even when the good ones pass, you will not know." You know. So sometimes, okay, we may say it's it's not bitterness. You know, you are no longer bitter. Okay, you are no longer angry, but you are not able 
to trust again. That means the bitterness, this disappointment has less, left a seed in you that makes it difficult for you to trust again. Anyone that approaches you, you are suspicious because of what you have passed through. But glory be to God, there are ways through which you can overcome all that and so that life can move on. And if you have experienced bitterness in your life, I pray that the God of peace will visit you today and he will wipe away every trace of bitterness in your heart. He will set to you and he will glorify his name in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You guys should clap for me now. I have spoken for like one and a half hours. <laughs> okay, next Saturday, if, I, if there's anybody who wants to come in the studio with me, you want to share your contribution live, I will just send the link to you and then you can join me live to share your contribution. Just make sure, you know, you don't shake the table or scatter the house, okay? <laughs> so if you want me to admit you into the studio live next Saturday, I will do it. I will bring you into the studio. Just make sure you are well dressed, you are okay, you know, nothing offensive. And you can come and join me to express your feeling. And if you know somebody who has experienced bitterness and has been able to deal with it, and the person wants to share his or, his or her experience on this platform, Please connect me with the person and we'll be ready to learn from the person. God bless you and bless you again. And if you are not giving me any questions today, then I will just, you know, leave you now. Lauren Williams, God bless you, Annie, for coming. You are late, I think. If you are just coming now, that means you are late, but you can replay the video. God bless you. I will stop today next week. Hopefully, I should be back to continue on this topic. And at the end of this series, I'm praying and hoping that every seed of bitterness will have been uprooted out of our lives in the name of Jesus. I'm wishing you a very joyful weekend. Enjoy yourself. Just, just you know, dance away every pain, you know, focus on your God. Just know that what lies ahead of you is much greater and better than what you have left behind. God bless you. And let me leave you with this man who just couldn't hold himself from dancing, you know, some strange dance while in the service. Enjoy your weekend. Amen. Yeah, the wife could not just stop the woman. I mean, the woman could not stop the man from expressing himself. He just wanted to dance, you know. Every caution the man would not take until, you know, the woman got fed up and just allowed the man to dance himself away. So go on and dance. Dance your pain away and enjoy your weekend. God bless you. And as the Lord tarries, I'll be seeing you next Saturday in Jesus' name. Love you all. Bye. Thank you.